Hey everyone, it's Kat and I'm back today for a bit of a chatty video. I just wanted to talk about some brands that I've never tried and why. Uh, so I thought about this topic simply because the last few months I've actually tried some brands that I've never tried before and they've been out for years and I just have not tried them. Um, and then I was just wondering like, what is the tipping point to make me buy a product or try a product? Now, the two recent brands no yeah two recent brands that i've been thinking about firstly i tried the rare beauty liquid blushes for the first time despite them being like hyped products for years i finally got around to trying them with the holiday pack uh, and then i also tried uh glossier for the first time because only recently they started shipping to australia they've been around for 10 years they've ignored us for 10 years um and they've only just started shipping uh to most countries. So uh, I got to try some products for the first time. And then it actually got me thinking that there are a lot of brands out there that I have tried at least one or two things from. Like I've tried probably most brands on the market, which is crazy. Um, and I think a lot of it had to do with uh, beauty news. We went through sort of a phase that if something was coming out something that was new or exciting, um, we wanted to create a video on it or we wanted to try it. So we had, we knew what we were talking about. So I think when we were doing beauty news over the years, um, you know, when it, whether it was, you know, Kylie Cosmetics or House Labs or something that I normally wouldn't really care too much about. Um, we sort of jumped on trying them because we, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to sort of, yeah, be aware of what's out there and what it's all like. But since doing Beauty News, I haven't had the motivation to do that so much. So these are some brands and they sort of fall into two categories I've noticed. Um, but these are the brands that I've never bought anything from or tried anything from and Here's why. Okay, there are three brands. I think they're all stocked at Mecca. So they're available to me. So that's not an issue. But there's something about them that annoys me. And it's their clean beauty claims. So we've got Kosas, RMS Beauty, and Rose Inc. They're three brands that, to be honest, there's nothing really in them that has been super enticing. I've heard some good things about some Kosas. Is it concealer or mascara or something? Uh, I feel like their concealer looks like um, liquid lipstick tubes that like a lot of brands did back in the day. So I'm thinking Dose of Colors, Jeffree Star, there was a Sugar Peel. They all had the same sort of style of uh, container and Kosas has their concealer in that. And for some reason that just sort of irks me. I don't know why. RMS Beauty has been recommended to me a lot recently because they have some really glowy blushes that could be a dupe for uh, Max Dario Rose that I've been trying to dupe this year. So uh, it's, I've been, a, a lot of people have been telling me about RMS Beauty, but when it comes to Kosas, RMS Beauty and Rose Ink, which Rose Ink, everything looks boring, so I'm not interested. So I've been hesitant to buy these brands because their clean beauty claims just really irk me. Firstly, I don't like um, greenwashing. I don't like that sort of everything else is dirty and we're the clean beacon of light in the industry. Like it's a whole bunch of BS. And you actually find that like synthetic products are often created to be less uh, irritating to the skin. So they're actually often better. One criticism I've heard from brands like this is that they actually go off very fast. And I do have quite a large makeup collection. I'm trying to whittle it down, but it's still fairly large. And my point is that I don't want a lipstick that's going to go off in six months because I'm not going to use it in that time. I've been trying to pan two MAC lipsticks this year and it's taken me all goddamn year. So I need my lipsticks and I need my makeup to last. I don't want bacteria or like mold growing in them. And if you talk about like you know, preservative free and clean and whatnot, you're just opening yourself up to a world of spoilt makeup, which doesn't sound great for me, especially at the price point that they are. So yeah, I don't buy from them almost out of principle that it sort of annoys me. I might accidentally buy a product that is like then deemed to be clean. I'm like, oh, damn it. But um, yeah, I generally don't like brands that that's their main sort of marketing point because it doesn't, I don't, I don't support that. I think that's, I think it's an irresponsible message to put out there. So yeah, that's why I haven't bought from those brands. Okay, so the next brands do have a theme as well. See if you can spot it. It's not very subtle. Uh, Give by Gwen Stefani, by Mario, One Size, Rem Beauty, Made by Mitchell and Nimia. So I haven't tried any of those brands. There's a lot more in this sort of category that I haven't tried. And that is all sort of uh, influencer or celebrity backed brands. Um, and I probably could, yeah, I could add a lot more to this list. Now, I don't have a necessarily a problem with influencer or celebrity brands. Um, I've tried many of them in the past. 
I just feel like that there's too many of them and they all sort of offer very similar things. Now I'm not necessarily opposed to trying these brands. I would, I would try them. Um, it's just that I'm not really that invested in it. And, and I, none of these sort of celebrities I'm that invested in that I'm like, I really want to support their brand. So that's not going to be a driving factor for me. I did actually see some beautiful sparkly eyeshadows from uh, Give by Gwen Stefani, but they're not pretty enough that I'm like, okay, I, I, I need to go out of my way to get. If I was watching them in store and I really liked them and they were like a sale going on, yeah, I might put one in my cart. I might, I might buy one, but there's nothing that has really enticed me. By Mario nearly had me with that holiday palette um, that was re-released this year. That's a very sort of nude and basic. Um, the reason why I didn't get that is because it's not actually stocked in Sephora this year. I, I think it was last year, but I was sort of I wasn't paying attention. I just had a newborn baby. I was I was not paying attention. Um, so I missed it last year. And this year you could only get it from the website and there was a, an Australian tax on it essentially. It was a lot more expensive than uh, what it would have been if you bought it in store. So I didn't end up buying it. But there's some nice products from Buy Mario. And being a makeup artist, and I quite like his aesthetic, you know, I may buy something in the future. When it comes to One Size, which is Patrick Starr's brand, starting with that like makeup remover mist thing and the wipes, it just sort of put everything, I don't know, it gave me the wrong vibe. I'm just like, I don't really care about this brand. The products that they came out with are quite gimmicky and I can't see myself wanting to use. So it sort of tainted the whole sort of reputation of the brand in my opinion. And I also feel like it's not that raved about. I can't see many people going, oh my God, you need to have the one size powder. It's the best thing in the world. Like if it is, I'll try it, but I haven't heard that. So for me, it's sort of like a, just a weird brand that Sephora stocks and probably has a contract with Patrick Star and they have to, but it's, I don't know. Um, the next brand is Rem Beauty. Now Rem Beauty and uh, Rare Beauty, I always have in my head as like the same brand. I know they're not, but they came out at a similar time and they're both by musicians and who are in the same sort of genre. So for me, I always have them linked. Um, from what I've heard, Rem Beauty, the products aren't that great. I've heard overall they brought out heaps of products when they launched and they just weren't that great. So that's always been what I think about it in my head is like then it's like an inferior rare beauty. I don't know, but that's the vibe I have in my head. So I've never bothered. Um, Made by Mitchell is probably the brand out of this list that I've been tempted by the most. Um, Made by Mitchell does have some really cool looking uh, sort of cream blushes and uh, like they look like they're like cream sparkly blush and they've got really cool colors but it's almost like i missed the boat on the first releases like i remember when they were released i do remember talking about them but he's released so many colors and so many things since that it's almost like analysis paralysis where do i start which orange blush do i go to i can't actually swatch them in store so i don't know so i've been tempted actually a few times to, to order some of the stuff but also i find the really cool stuff gets sold out really quickly so in australia glam raider stock um, made by Mitchell and um, I have sometimes browse and sometimes put things in my cart but yeah I think the, the sort of really cool shades and whatnot tend to sell out pretty quickly and I, I, I sort of feel like if I try anything it's just like the tip of the iceberg so I sort of feel like I've missed the boat a little bit so um, but yeah it's one of the brands I probably will delve into eventually. And lastly, Nimia, which is Nikki Tutorial's brand. Now, Nimia started with um, skincare and like a mister thing or something, um, mainly skincare. And I'm not interested, like cool, but I, you know, I can get skincare wherever. Uh, but recently she's released uh, little cream sort of pop blushes that do look really stunning. They're probably a little bit too pigmented for me, but I'm not going to lie when I say that I did actually go and have a look how much they cost and how much shipping was and whatnot. They're all sold out, so it doesn't matter. Um, but if she keeps going along the path of releasing interesting makeup that does feel like it's potentially a twist on what's already out there. So cream blushes are everywhere, but she has released what's supposed to be quite pigmented but quite blendable cream blushes. Like you don't often see that. And I personally love really sort of corally orange blushes. And the fact that there were three blushes released and two of them were corally orange shades. I was like, okay, you have my attention. Um, but I feel like that's one of the brands that if there was actually more to order to like make shipping worthwhile, um, I would potentially order some. But right now I feel like there's not enough actually. So it's the opposite 
situation with Made by Mitchell. There's just not enough makeup for me to want to test. Okay, I realized that my list was nine uh, long and I feel like that's a bit frustrating. So I'm going to add one more brand in a different category and this will represent a few other sort of brands, but I'm going to say Hermes. So there are quite a lot of very luxury fashion or like bag accessory brands that have recently brought out makeup lines and I haven't tried most of them. So this is just sort of like represents a few. Now, my main reasoning is that I'm not opposed to it. I quite like the Hermes uh, lipstick packaging. I like that they're, um, you can refill them. I think that's really cool. There are obviously some really beautiful products when it comes to high-end makeup. So obviously, um, like especially foundations and concealers are quite well known to be um, get better with price. But I think color makeup in general, it sort of hits a point at like the mid sort of priced mark and then it doesn't get that much better for the money you pay so i'm less inclined to want to spend you know 70 80 90 bucks on a lipstick because i don't think that's any better than my mac lady danger for example so i haven't delved into it it's quite expensive and i feel like it's more about status than it is about the quality of the makeup but in saying that i have tried a lot of higher end brands that have been around for a while so i'm thinking of like Chanel, Dior, um, Tom Ford, stuff like that. And I'm, to be honest, I've mainly bought those in sort of discount places. So like uh, Estee Lauder corporate store, for example, has sometimes Tom Ford makeup and I haven't been that impressed. There are some nice products. Like I really like that, um, was it the Chanel bronzer that they reformulated? Before they reformulated, that was a really lovely cream bronzer. So like, there are some nice products there, but overall, I don't like them any more than my sort of mid-range makeup. So that's why I haven't delved into a lot of real designer stuff. Um, it's just, in my opinion, not really worth the money. So yeah, there we go. That's 10 brands, 10 brands that I haven't tried and why. I'd love to know in the comments, what are some brands that you just haven't bothered trying and and why like it could be a conscious decision where you're like I do not want to buy from this brand or it could just be that it's never really interested you you're like that is just something that I don't do not look at I don't really care that's the rem beauty of cat's life that doesn't really care about it um so I'd love to know in the comments and thank you so much to my channel members for supporting this channel and I'll see you all in the next one bye